In a previous video, I looked at how well color correlated to type using the pre-existing data set in the Pokedex. For those unaware, the Pokedex categorizes Pokemon into one of 10 colors and lets you search for Pokemon using color as a filter. The main problem with this is that in the English language versions of the games, the color categorization is generally considered quite bad. You have White Dialga, Brown Volcanion, Blue Masquerain, just to name a few. In analyzing the correlation of color against type, I wondered whether the results would be significantly different if I recategorized them in a way that more aligned with what I saw with my own eyes, and also added orange as a color. The existing colors do not include orange, which I think skews the data quite a lot, since many fire types end up in the brown category and so on. However, to do so would require me to manually recategorize every Pokemon into a color, which, given there are 1,025 Pokemon at this point, could take quite a while. But because I have no regard for the value of my own time, I decided to go ahead and do it anyway. I'll make a couple of notes here about how I recategorized the Pokemon. My method was to open a spreadsheet with all 1,025 Pokemon and their types, then look at the official artwork of each Pokemon as displayed on Bulbapedia. Using just Bulbapedia as a central source is important, since some Pokemon actually have quite radical changes in color between older games, newer games, and non-game media such as the anime. Then I would simply populate the spreadsheet with a single color for each Pokemon. I decided against making a sheet with two colors for each Pokemon, because quite honestly, most of them can be relatively cleanly put into a single color category, provided that those categories are sufficient. Also, adding two colors would make the analysis later on significantly more complicated, and I don't really need complicated answers for a relatively simple question. On sufficiency, I've added orange as a color. It is baffling to me at this point that orange still isn't a color in the English language games, but this is my data set, so I'm adding orange. I will make the spreadsheet that I'm using public and editable in the description, so if anyone disagrees with me or wants to embellish or add to it at all, you absolutely can. This type of work is well outside my normal expertise, so I'd welcome any additions from people with greater skills than mine. I'd also like to acknowledge that categorizing the Pokemon into single color categories is not that easy, and while I think the devs got it wrong in some places, I don't want to be too critical of them given that it is not an easy task, and I assume they tried their best. I will also say that as much as is possible, my process was blind to the official categorizations. I had obviously already seen most of them during the course of making the other video, but I also wasn't actively checking against them while making my own categorizations. After some menial data entry and occasionally very tricky categorizations, I had my data set. First things first, what were the differences between the Pokedex data set and mine? Per the graphs, blue, brown, purple, pink, yellow, and green Pokemon are less common in my data set, while white, red, gray, and black are up, as well as the addition of an orange category. Most of the change here is me taking a different view on what Pokemon mostly are. For example, under my data set, Dialga is blue, versus the white that it is in the Pokedex data set. The addition of orange also saps 49 Pokemon from brown and red, which is a large portion of the change. Still, the changes aren't super drastic. None of the colors have moved more than 5.1% at the extreme, and some as little as 0.3%. When it comes to types and colors, I'm also going to use a more conventional statistical method for the analysis. In my last video, I was looking to see if the majority of Fire-type Pokemon were red, or if the majority of Water-type Pokemon were blue, rather than whether a disproportionate number of blue Pokemon were also Water-types. In this case, I'll be asking whether Water-type Pokemon are overrepresented in the blue category, measured by matching the number of blue Water-types against the overall number of Water-types. For example, 17.1% of Pokemon are Water-type, if 34.2% of all blue Pokemon were water type, we might say that water types are twice as common as we would expect from the average. 
From this point on, the analysis is not comparative and I am referring to solely the numbers in my dataset unless said otherwise. The actual numbers on water types being blue are that there are 158 blue Pokemon and 79 of those are water types, meaning that exactly half of all blue Pokemon are water types. This is very disproportionate given that water types make up 176 of the 1025 total Pokemon, so we would expect them to be about 17.1% of blue Pokemon, not half. On my previous grounds of more likely than not, they would also qualify as a blue Pokemon has a 50% chance of being water type, and thus you have a coin flip odds of doing super effective damage with a grass type move. On fire types, there's a significant change from last time since I have introduced the orange category, which captures a lot of fire type Pokemon previously labelled as brown, but also some labelled as red. Fire types are still overrepresented in the red category though, with 26 fire types out of 72 red Pokemon. 9.4% of Pokemon are fire type, and 36.1% of red Pokemon are fire types, so they're about 4 times as common as we might reasonably expect. There are 50 orange Pokemon, and 19 of those are fire types, meaning that 38% of orange Pokemon are fire types. This is relatively similar to fire's overrepresentation in red, so if you see a red or an orange Pokemon, it is disproportionately likely to be a fire type. Brown is quite interesting as there are a couple of leaders in the group, but also a more even spread than might be expected. There are 124 brown Pokemon, with 39 of those being normal types. Think your classic brown normal flyers, your marsupials and rodents, various dogs, all of that. Normal types are extremely common at 14.9% of all Pokemon, and are just over double their expected proportion of brown Pokemon at 31.4%, but that's not the interesting part. Ground types are 8.7% of all Pokemon, but 20.1% of brown Pokemon meaning that they are more disproportionately represented amongst brown Pokemon than normal types are. Rock types are 8.5% of all Pokemon, but 12.9% of brown Pokemon. Not nearly as disproportionate, but still slightly overrepresented. I think it is interesting that there is a colour category that has multiple types of Pokemon that are overrepresented relative to how many of them there are in total. Moving on to white Pokemon, they are much the same with 93 Pokemon classified as white, but with 5 types comprising more than 10% of each of that 93. Of those 93, 10 are psychic types, 11 are flying types, 12 are water types, 15 are normal types, and 19 are ice types. Ice is about 3 times as common as we might expect at 20.3% of white Pokemon and 6.3% of all Pokemon. Normal is also a large portion of white Pokemon, but actually about proportionate as expected at 16% of all white Pokemon. Water is actually underrepresented at 12.9% of all white Pokemon, and so is Psychic. 53 Pokemon are classified as pink, with 20 of those being fairy types. Fairy types are 7.4% of all Pokemon, so being 37% of all pink Pokemon is really disproportionate. Psychic types are about 13% of all Pokemon, but 28.5% of pink Pokemon, so just over twice as common as might be expected. Steel types are 18.3% of all grey Pokemon, despite being only 8.2% of all Pokemon. Just to round it out and stop listing percentages, grass types are still well overrepresented, with 60.7% of all green Pokemon being grass types, against grass types being 14.2% of all Pokemon. This is actually roughly the same as in the last data set with the higher threshold as well. I'll stop reading aloud percentages there, and if you are more interested into looking into other types or disproportions, you can find the spreadsheet linked in the description box below. A few closing thoughts. The recategorization of types and colors has had a somewhat tangible effect, meaning that more accurately, but still subjectively, putting Pokemon into color groups means that they are more likely to correlate to typing. I am sure that my analysis here is still lacking in some way or other, and people will again have very interesting thoughts or questions in the comments that I didn't think of. 
please do share these below. I really enjoy hearing from people who know more about colors and statistics than me, and I really love all the discussion that happens as a result. I do take some heart in these stronger correlations, as it means my recategorizations had an effect, and for the most part, strengthened the correlation between type and color. I wasn't specifically aiming for that to be the case, but I did expect there to be some correlation when I made the initial video. It also means that I was somewhat correct about the data of the Pokedex being tangibly skewed by flawed categorizations, and that if we change some Pokemon to better reflect the colors we perceive them as, then type and color as a whole would show an increased correlation. One last note. Some people suggested that the regrouping of Pokemon should be done using a program that would identify the most common pixel color in each sprite and allocate a color based on that. I don't at all think this is a bad idea, but I did decide against doing it for two reasons. I thought categorizing them myself would be more fun, and I don't entirely trust any program to sufficiently filter out black and white space and outlines in sprites for the results to be accurate. I might be wrong about that, but that is my reasoning. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss future videos. You're all, all the best, see you next time.